Hello everybody and welcome back. Uh, big welcome to all the people watching again and all the new viewers and especially to those who are subscribing, commenting, getting involved. It's great. I love it. I really do. So, uh, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> I have switched back to the 501 because, uh, I've got to be honest, some guys have said they're struggling with the loaders. So I thought I'd take for it quickly. 501 has this smoother bucket and I believe it is the easier loader to use as a loader in softened substrate so I've been knocking this stuff off with the dozer, it's fairly soft. And I've just got the bucket parallel, I'm just gently moving the arm up and down a little, you see there? I'm just gently pushing forward so I don't fall out from against the wall. Pushing forward, gently roll the bucket backwards, move it upwards and it just fills, just like that as you cut the wall out. So yeah, that's that's the basic loader action. It's in at the bottom. Oscillate backwards and forwards gently. Sort of start tilting the bucket through that motion and raising the arm up and down as well. You generate a big pile of those balls and then you can just load them up. And you can see even with the, the, the load lock on, they're spilling out of this bucket. It's huge. Like, uh, I, I, I held it up in comparison next to the 500's bucket. They may well be the same volume. But because this one's square, it is actually, though I'm, I'm being a bit of an idiot here, uh, it is actually easier to use in these hoppers, it's got a lot more clearance. Um, I think it's got a slightly longer arm, the 501 may be 5 meters 10 instead of 5 meters. I don't know. Um, but yeah, so for pure loading duties, I think if you players out there who are struggling, do yourself a favour Get the smooth bladed O O1 models over those tooth models and, and have another go in softened substrate. Break it up with a dozer. Either bulldoze it off of a sh sort of a, a, sh a shelf or a step like uh, I am here. Or go in with the ripper uh, and, and break the surface up in sort of a crisscross pattern. So go all across like you're ploughing in one direction with your tracks on the smooth. Then go back and forth in the other direction riding the ruts, digging that uh, ripper in. Make sure your blade's up and clear because you're going to probably have to sort of oscillate the ripper up and down as you go through because if you go too deep it doesn't seem to rip. It might rip up you know, on full depth and you just can't see the effect. But you don't want to sort of reverse it through or park with it in because it destroys material. And the same thing applies to the excavator. But yeah, I'm getting off subject. We're, we're doing the 500. Uh, as I say, I, I, I was loading these hoppers uh, earlier. so I've just got to smooth this out to do my nut. Um, and uh, I keep on getting stuck in these hoppers because of those long teeth on the 500. Um, the 501, as I say, it, it's a bit more difficult to jam into the tougher substrate, but um, once you sort of get in there and get a grip, it isn't so bad. This hole was dug with the, in front of me with the 500, and you can see it's got that smooth bottom in it where the, the front teeth were digging in and digging out the middle more than the edges. So I'm just going to go gently in with this, because I, I want a downhill here anyway. So decided I'm going to uh, cut to the chase and go deep with these hoppers early so that I can just mine and mine and mine and just rebuild them. So yeah, you can see there I lifted my front wheels off, got off angle, made my hole on an angle. So I'm just going to back out and uh, let that material fill back in. Is it going to? Is it going to? No. Thanks. Figures. So yeah. It doesn't matter what angle you're on, the cut is in line with the wheelbase, not gravity. Uh, which is something to remember. The angle of the bucket also sets the angle of the cut. So if you're cutting a slope, that's your slope angle. Um, so if it's if it's above the wheelbase, you'll cut upwards. If it's below the wheelbase, you'll cut downwards. Uh, moving the arm up and down changes the height that you're cutting that angle at. So uh, I'll demonstrate in just a sec how to do like a high cut and a back cut which is a technique that I've sort of seen loaders doing. I don't know if I'm calling it the right thing. I should really do my research. <laughs> um, but I, currently I'm reading up on how to set up a Discord, so uh, I, I definitely for sure know one subscriber is interested in that. If anyone else is interested, please let me know in the comments. Uh, the more people who comment, the probably more motivated I'll be to stop mining and start doing it. Um, so yeah, it, doing a back cut. You can see over here the wall is pretty high and uh, we want a bit more clearance here for turning around and stuff right so what I'm going to do is just tidy up the bottom of this car a little bit to make it a bit more vertical to make the back cut easier to demonstrate so I'm just going to go in at the bottom here just 
unfortunately. Right, we've got a nice vertical wall there. So we'll pretend to mine that because I can do a back cut with a half full bucket. Uh, I'll see if I can demonstrate it better from this angle. There we go. So, raise up your bucket, put it sort of forward at a 45 degree angle and go in. You'll see it's generating particles there. Drop it down a little bit and bring the bucket down forward and then reverse out a little. Drop it down. Let's sort of push in. Generate all those particles, bring it down again. There you go, see? And you can get down there with a bit of practice before they do and before they do the respawn back into soil thing and just collect them all up in the bucket. Um, I'm a bit hindered by the viewpoint here uh, and the fact that I'm doing a video so I'm a bit nervous but yeah you get that right but you can see the amount of material it's just brought down for me to clear up. Um, so you go in nice and slow press Z to lock into forward one when you're going forwards and you'll just lock in and you can just gently press forward and the loader as you lift the front bar just sort of bounces back out at you and you can just oscillate and dig in being silly because I didn't set my GPS up properly. Um, you see there, low on fuel. I have a suspicion that I have mentioned to, uh, to someone in the comments in a previous video that the wider tracks eat fuel on the dozers because my big dozer was eating fuel. Uh, and now this loader, which had three quarters of a tank, is now low on fuel. So and it's got the chain tyres on. So there might be something in what they're saying there. It is only a rumour. I think I saw it in the discord last night when I was reading up about the new update which uh, one of my subscribers kindly pointed out to me and I, I'm nervous about it for several reasons because people are saying like the models are a bit messed up uh, when you dig with the dirt it doesn't appear in the buckets and this kind of thing I'm hoping because this is the dev branch that they're talking about by the time it hits the main branch everything will be cool and we won't have to worry about that that would be awesome um, but it's a development game and it's only been out a month Things will happen, things will change. My big fear is the save breakup. Uh, hopefully, they'll have a stay with current version option in the uh, uh, betas and updates thing so you can stay with uh, this version. So, sort of, this would be the pre soil update version, I guess, if you wanted to carry on with your mine in this. But if I have to restart, my aim will be to go deeper. There may well be more explosives and excavator use and concentrating specifically on some lithium. A uh, bit less road building, a bit less of that kind of thing. Just realised I'm doing all this digging. I don't think I've actually turned my machinery on. Ah, uh, who's a crazy fool? Hey, thinking about all this load of stuff, doing all this load of stuff. Hasn't even filled his machinery. So uh, you've seen the kind of volumes I'm loading in this video with this loader. Uh, y you can see uh, uh, if you've seen the other video I did this morning of me using the 500. The 501 is just that much simpler to use and get out of these hoppers um, on the same ramps. I haven't built these ramps up for this vehicle. So, uh, yeah, this is the loader in my opinion and the other one is an excavator. But uh, let me know what you think of the two because if you're having better luck with it with a different method, it, uh, you know. Um, but uh, I, hope, I hope that little bit of a uh, loader pointer came in useful. Um, I'll go back to it and uh, see if I remember anything else in a sec. Just turning all, all of these to see whether running two machines gets me sort of more of a volumetric kick that I want. So we've got 2,300 in that one, double in the back one, so I need to load more into this nearer hopper. Uh, yeah, we can go for a bit longer on that fuel tank, I think. So, uh, so it's got a fuel truck, giving myself a nice little job to run out here. Put a little bit of fuel in. It's a nice little bit of role play, isn't it? Uh, don't know if anyone's playing the game like that. You know, playing a bit more serious with the. Uh... Yeah, that's an interesting effect, by the way. You jump out of a vehicle under something and you end up through it, which uh, can be handy. Can can be advantageous. Um, yeah, like uh, I've played a financial run against uh, the the loan system uh, at the start of my last game, and at the start of this one. Uh, it's fairly easy to get around so um, you know a lot of people are talking about hardcore game mode uh, who's sort of rigging up their own by role playing it and making it like a bit more real is anyone doing that um, let me know in the comments because if we do a game reset I'm gonna make it a bit more hardcore on the finances because this game did with all the machines I've sold and everything and all the mining I've done I've ended up fairly well off and uh, Maybe I need a bit more of a challenge. 
make it a little harder on myself, I don't know. Maybe ban myself from doing fuel truck missions. Um, which I must film. Like, I, I, it occurred to me that I hadn't filmed that. But yeah, you can see, back to the loader, um, when you're ripping into the high stuff, rip the top out first, uh, and it generates a load of mess, and then rip the bottom, what I believe they call the toe of the slope out afterwards. So you can use the toe to got sort of... Uh, get a little bit more altitude on a top cut if you want to, to cut out a bit more step and, and depending on personal preference, you see I'm still struggling a little to empty the uh, loader on these ramps but I didn't want to build them too high because I, mean, I may well rip them out again, all of this is temporary I'm just working this area uh, as a loader demonstration uh, and because I, I want a bit of an area down here to work these ramps these hoppers are going deep is the idea so uh, I might get in there with an excavator to speed stuff up if I get a bit tired this afternoon. Um, they wreck material very quickly. They are genuinely the thing. Uh, get in there with a bucket excavator and go for it. Uh, especially if it gets tougher, because uh, then then I'll, uh, I might experiment with one of the other excavators and get the ripper on it and see, see how it does. Um, looking for the one size fits all excavator. So uh, yeah, we might get uh, completely experimental with the excavators a bit later on. Uh, still need to take the grader out. Been building up that road that goes down the slope where I was dumping from the dumper. So um, that needs some work from a bulldozer, so I need to buy another little bulldozer. So there's plenty going to be going on. Um, one thing the 500 loader does do really badly when it's cutting it is cutting out like a curve in the middle of a cut. But one thing it is good at when the blade is level is like smoothing, either in forward and reverse, so uh, it can make a good road working tool. Uh, I've been having some success with that and some utter failures. Uh, I'm sure it's me. Um, but uh, <laughs> uh, I'm working on improving that, but I think the bulldozer is the road building tool. Uh, you can just drive slowly forward and carve out a flat, flat bit. It starts to go over on the angle, back up, angle the blade over cut it again until you've got a roughly level surface and then go in with a loader and fill in any uh, low spots or go in the grader and take off the high spots uh, whichever tickles you fancy I guess enjoy this game, you can play it how you like uh, that's why I'm loving it, it's got so little format at the moment uh, in the ways of missions and like uh, what you might call linear gameplay that it's just completely freeform, like it's the challenges you set yourself um, you know, I, I've done crazy things in this hole now, uh, and uh, it's starting to get a little challenging just in and of itself. Keep on having to jump out smooth because I'm being an idiot, overfilling my bucket. So that's one thing: is it don't try for too much. This and the bulldozer. Um, if you dig the buckets in too much, in the case of the 500, it tends to start ripping into the material really heavily and kind of deleting it. I guess would be the best term. It just starts to disappear without you producing any material to scoop up. Uh, this one will do the same thing. Likewise, like now, you see my GPS is well over on the angle, and I'm on the lean, big star before I even start my cut. So that's going to start an angled cut. This, the 500, it's important to be level. This one is really, really unaccepting of it. It just, um, you just end up cutting on an angle on an angle, and then you roll. Um, so. Uh, you can you can angle the front wheels across and sort it out, but uh, realistically, it's a get a get a scoop full of muck and uh, put it in the empty bit of the hole and uh, level it up. I guess would be the way forward. And when I say muck, I'm talking about like valueless dirt. Don't really, I mean, in a pay dirt hole like here, where eventually you're going to mine it out anyway. Um, you can just like move the pay dirt around. I think. Pretty sure this isn't like Gold Rush, where moving pay dirt resets it back to an arbitrary value. I think it's always the same because you, you know, mining underground is something they talk about. Uh, I, I'm looking forward to seeing some dedicated underground mining gear. Uh, that that's going to be cool. Um, likewise, some dedicated surface gear. You know, sort of like the bucket scoop loaders that scoop up a slope and fill. Um, you know, the big stuff that'll fill one of these 40-ton dumpers in sort of one or two scoops, guaranteed. Uh, that'd be quite cool. Um, some kind of small bucket wheeled excavator um, perhaps later on machinery that you can put together into your own custom built shaped sort of excavators like bucket wheels, trench diggers, that kind of thing. Uh, towable scrapers on my list of wants. Uh, 
yeah, let me know in the comments what you want to see. Uh, we've done this before, and uh, someone suggested the roller. Um, I likewise think the roller would be a great I like addition, or as a towable trailer, of course. Some kind of towable roller might be a, 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 an easier option. I know that the uh, NMC guys have got a lot of experience building trailers and stuff for Farm Sim, and Farm Sim 22 has rollers in it. Uh, I don't know how they work. I'm not sure whether the programming is even vaguely the same for the two games, but uh, with their experience, I'm sure they could come up with something like a towable, towable scraper um, that goes on the back of like maybe the smallest dozer and take the ripper off it to give it a hitch because um, you only need like one small dozer with a ripper you could have the other small dozer with a tow hitch for the scraping um, one that's driven by itself would be kind of cool as well because you pretty much separate it's got a loader's back end without the cab on the back and then it's got a loader's front end on the front and it articulates so you've got two sets of wheels with a bucket in the middle, that's your scraper. Uh, Toba one just has one set of wheels at the back. Uh, I think they're pretty cool, I like scrapers, I like watching them build. I like a wipe ass, that was pretty cool. They were huge ones though, they were TS24, so 24 tonne bucket, and they were pretty big. Um, and they were being, um, well they were pretty big to me, I was only a little kid. Wheels were two or three times my height. Um, but the, they were being pushed around by like D9 bulldozers and stuff, so uh, I guess they were pretty heavy when they were laden. It might have been 25 cubic meters, and they were pulling out some pretty heavy stone and sand, so it's pretty cool to watch. Uh, they, they could cut quite a deep cut in uh, 24 hours, that's for sure, because they were going, going like that. They were parked up on the weekend, they could go around them. Like, gotta be honest, the late 80s, no one locked up the machines, it was crazy. They just sat there with the keys in, no one touched them weird when you look back on it now <laughs> um, but yeah I, I, I in a conclusion I prefer the 500 loader uh, of the two totally there you go that that was a bad example of the angle cut so uh, yeah I, I mean uh, let me know what you think let me know what you think of the upcoming uh, update uh, if you've heard any gossip let me know um, all is for that kind of thing and uh, Hope I've managed to stay a bit more on topic for machinery digging it out of ore. Uh, it's all about improvement, as I say. Uh, improvement in my mining skill, improvement in my video skill. Might have a go at editing at some point and cut out some of the drivel. Um, so yeah, uh, thanks for listening in guys. And uh, I hope this sort of clears up the 501-500 argument a bit for you. Um, from someone who's got a few hours in the game's opinion. Because it is just my opinion. And the fact that you guys are listening to it is freaking awesome. So thank, Thanks to all the... Uh, to the developers and uh, NMC, thanks to my viewers and subscribers, and uh, yeah, thank you. Jeez, it's crazy. Thank you. Um, see you next time. Have a good one.